show you something familiar. Okay, this is our planet Earth, right? Uh, I've been looking for a globe picture that shows Malaysia. Usually it shows America. Not sure why. They just like to show America. <laughs> but this one shows Malaysia. Okay, somewhere there. Lah, okay. Uh, now, human beings are way, way, way small compared to how, how large the Earth is. Uh, the Earth is 12742 kilometers uh, in a diameter. Okay? diameter. So that's a big number, right? 12,742 kilometers in diameter. Uh, but if you think that the Earth is large, right? When you compare the Earth to our bigger cousins, uh, you see how, how we are dwarfed, okay? It's really, really, really small. You can see where the Earth is, here. Okay, about 700 Earths can actually fit into Saturn and 1,300 Earths can fit into Jupiter. Okay, if you if you like astronomy, not astrology, okay, that's a different thing. If you like astronomy, uh, probably you and or space, you know, you will you will like all this data, okay? So 1,300 Earths can fit into Jupiter. You can go and amaze your friends. Uh, but if you think that Jupiter is large, uh, what about we compare it to our sun? Where is Earth now? It's about one pixel on your screen, right? So this is Earth. Uh, Pluto is almost like gone, you know. Uh, Jupiter and the Sun. How many Sun? Oh, sorry. How many Earths can fit into the Sun? One point three million Earths. Okay, one point three million Earths can fit into the Sun. Uh, if you think the Sun is large, is huge. Okay, wait till you see even bigger ones. Okay, so Sun is now this size. Jupiter is one pixel. Earth is invisible. It's, it's gone from our view. You know, cannot be seen. Uh, now, what is Arcturus, right? Arcturus is a red giant star, not as hot as our sun. It's a red giant. It's about 4,000 Celsius, a few thousand Celsius cooler than our sun, but it's still burning hot. Okay? Uh, it's the fourth brightest star at night, fourth brightest object at night. Okay? Uh, the brightest object at night is number one is moon. Okay, number two is uh, Jupiter. It's the second brightest object is Jupiter, not a star. Number three is actually Venus, another not a star. Number four is uh, this planet, uh, sorry, this, uh, this star. So it's the, it's the brightest star at night. Uh, not counting Moon, Jupiter, and Venus. Okay, so it's about thirty-seven light years away from us. Uh, one light year is is the time uh, that the time light travels in a year. Okay, so light travels at the speed of three hundred thousand kilometers per second. Okay, three hundred thousand kilometers per second times the number of seconds in a year. Okay, so you get about nine point five trillion, nine point five trillion kilometers. That's the distance uh, of one light year. So Arcturus is uh, 37 light years away. Okay, so you can do your calculation. Uh, there's like too many zeros to, to compute. Okay, if Arcturus is so large and uh, such a great distance away, wait till you see Beetlejuice. Same name as the uh, comedy movie, horror movie. I don't know what it's comedy or horror. Uh, Beetlejuice, okay. Uh, is is huge, okay? And uh, this one is called Antares. Uh, Betelgeuse is about 640 light years away. And Antares is about 550 light years away. And compared to Arcturus, this is Arcturus. You see, just now is, is so huge, right? Compared to our sun. Uh, at this scale, Arcturus is this size. The sun is one pixel, probably not, I don't think you can see it on your screen. Uh, so this is Antares. And it's, that's not the largest yet. You know. There are even bigger ones. Uh, but coming back to our Earth, just showing you all the pictures uh, change your perspective of how, how big the Earth is, how large is our planet, or how small we are. What's the size of human beings? Does it make you wonder, like, why would God create us? Why does God care for us? Such tiny beings in a universe so incredibly huge. Some questions to ponder. Uh, now, welcome to our Bible study. Uh, blessed evening to those that just joined us. Uh, to, tonight, we're continuing our Bible study series on things people ask. Okay, this series aims to connect to questions that Christians might face or questions that non-believers will ask you. Okay, and discuss them uh, so that you can have a clearer grasp on the topics as well as be better equipped to respond to them. Okay, so, so far we've gone through three topics uh, in, with the green checks, okay? Tonight we're going to talk about creation, evolution, or what? Uh, so questions such as, uh, what's the deal with uh, 
the relationship between creation and evolution? And what's the tension between them? What, what is the theory of evolution? Is it wrong for Christians to believe in the theory of evolution? You know, uh, can't we all be friends? You know, must we choose either one or can we embrace both? Uh, what are the different views in the beliefs about creation? You know, how old is the, is the universe? How old is our planet Earth? Uh, did God create everything in seven literal days or 24 hours each? So there's so many questions, okay? so many questions that we can ask. Uh, now, how many of you have, uh, have been asked such questions before? Anyone? Like the age of the earth or, or, or creation, evolution, you know, which one is right? You know, these kind of questions. I think, uh, I think you all have been asked this question. I, I believe, like, I believe so. Uh, many of you, your cameras are off. So even if you raise your hand, I can't see you. Okay. Uh, the title for this evening, uh, to, uh, for tonight, okay, is uh, I've, I've rephrased the title to, to this, okay, the primer on creation versus evolution. I use the word primer because uh, this topic is far too vast to be covered in just one session, let alone less than one hour. Okay, that's uh, an, an impossible feat. So the word primer is there. Primer means to start something off, okay? Uh, like to prime you off, to prime you to, to, to get you started so that you can be interested enough uh, to go further, okay? Uh, so now let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, give you thanks for tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will help us to uh, discover in your word and also to learn from uh, principles and ideas uh, that you have given wisdom to, to the people who, who thought through these things uh, in, in studying of your word and also in the light of uh, observation of the world and the planets and the stars and the galaxy, Lord. Uh, on what, what should we understand about all this, Lord? Uh, but ultimately, we, we want to return to your word to, to see all things, Lord. We give you thanks. Uh, praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now, a little girl uh, asked her mother, how did the human race appear? The mother answered, God made Adam and Eve, and they had children, and so was all mankind made. The next day, the little girl asked her father the same question. How did the human race appear, daddy? The, uh, her father answered, many years ago, there were monkeys from which the human race evolved. The confused girl returned to her mother and said, Mom, how is it possible that you told me human, human race was created by God and dad said that they evolved, uh, they developed from monkeys? The mother answered, Simple, my dear. I told you about my side of the family and your father told you about his. So uh, my question to you tonight is, uh, which side of the family are you on? Okay, I'm kidding. But really, okay, how many of you think that uh, we should look further into the theory of evolution? You know, like uh, tonight, there will, not, there, will, there will not be any slides that will mention the question specifically. Okay? So I will just ask you questions. Okay, so if you have, uh, if you have some answers that you want to respond uh, to share, you can just unmute and speak. Okay. So, so how many of you think that uh, theory of evolution is, is uh, worth more, more look, you know, it, it has, it deserves a deeper uh, look or inspection rather than just uh, dis dismissing it off as, uh, you know, like bunk or, or garbage. Anyone? Ah, okay, Dave, I see Dave's uh, hand. Others? Don't be afraid to, to, to say that, you know, uh, nobody will judge you. <laughs> Brian, creation all the way. Uh, yes, Pastor Lim? I think, uh, I mean, evolution has always been mentioned in textbooks and the scientific circles and as an accepted uh, kind of uh, way. I think I'll, I'll be more interested uh, to see how creation, uh, the biblical idea of creation stacks up against all the arguments of, for evolution. Mm -hmm. Okay, not sure we will be inspecting so many evidence tonight or not. <laughs> uh, but let's let's begin by defining evolution first. Okay, uh, evolution. Okay, of course the founder is uh, Charles Darwin. We all know the name Darwin. 
The theory of evolution proposes that life and humans arose through a natural process. Okay, no involvement of anything supernatural, but it is just natural. Okay, evolution is the natural process of gradual change that takes takes place over many generations, okay, during which species of animals, plants, insects slowly change of their physical uh, appearances, characteristics as they adapt to the differences in their environments. So this is a picture, a very old drawing uh, on uh, how the modern theory of the descent of man, how man came about. Okay, so it's actually from single cell creature uh, to multi cell, okay, and then to some kind of reptiles or fish. Uh, oh, sorry, fish first, okay, then, then reptile, then uh, mammals, you know, and then after that become human beings. Uh, now, what does the theory of evolution say, right? It says that it is possible for the DNA of an organism, organism to occasionally change or mutate. Uh, the change brought about by the mutation is either beneficial, harmful, or neutral. Okay, so through reproduction, the beneficial mutation spreads. Okay, uh, the process of culling bad mutations uh, is called natural selection. That means the, the, the advantageous mutations will spread because it's, it helps animals to survive better in the world in natural setting. So they will continue to uh, reproduce but the ones with bad mutation will slowly die off. This is called natu natural selection. As mutations occur over a long period of time, okay, uh, even through millions of years, uh, new species came out from that kind of muta mutation. Uh, so this, this is the process where all species of life we see today uh, actually came from this kind of uh, evolution. Okay? From simplest bacteria to humans uh, and everything in between. Uh, this, is a, this is a graph. Uh, it's a bit old, like it's from 2005 or New York, New York Times, like 2006, like around 2006, uh, showing the percentage of population in the world that believe uh, in different countries, okay, that believe in evolution. Okay, so it's the highest in Iceland, more than 80%, and lowest in Turkey. Uh, not many Asian countries here. I think it's done in many European and some African countries, like if, hey, oh no, this Estonia, not Africa. Not, not, not Ethiopia. So mostly European countries with the exception of US. So you might be surprised to see the US only 40% of people believe in evolution. Uh, generally people still believe in some kind of creation okay, in, the, in the US. Uh, now, what is creation? Creation asserts that hum humans uh, as well as the rest of the world, actually the entire universe okay, were created by God. Okay, so in the book of Genesis, it tells us that God created uh, everything created the world and the first humans, Adam and Eve, in six days. Uh, you can see here, okay, uh, day one, God separated light from darkness. Day two, uh, waters above, waters below. Day three, uh, vegetation. Day four, sun, moon. Day five, okay, day six, and then day seven. Uh, the interesting thing here is that there's some kind of uh, correlation here. If you see, okay, uh, maybe I will go back to the previous slide. This is easier to see. Okay, day one, uh, God created light, okay? Day four, God created luminaries, the planets, moon, you know? So there's a correlation here. Day two is water and sky. Day five is fish and birds to dwell in the sky and the water, okay? Day three is land and vegetation. Day six is beast and man. So th isn't that interesting? So there's some kind of uh, uh, art artistry or creativity there, okay? Now, there are many types of creationism uh, that is sub not, uh, not all Christians believe in just God creating everything. So there are, there are a variety of views, okay? So this is the, a view, a chart that I've made to show from evolutionary creation all the way to young earth creation, okay? So the, more, the, the lower it is, the more similar it is to evolution, okay? The higher it is, the more different it is from evolution. So we use evolution theory as a, as a, as a standard, okay? So the first one is the evolutionary creation. What does that mean, right? Uh, just each one only will receive like two, one or two sentences uh, explanation, okay? Because we can't explain further. You can do your own research later, okay? Evolutionary creation, okay, is, uh, is based on a book by uh, this guy, Dennis. I don't know how to read his name. Uh, evolutionary creation, a Christian approach to evolution. Also, evolution creation is very similar, actually very, very similar to evolutionary theory, almost the same, okay? But it holds the view that God still has a hand uh, 
not clear exactly how, but God has a hand in maintenance of his creation. So God is involved, okay, maybe sporadically, uh, hands offish kind of involvement. Uh, the next level up is uh, theistic evolution. Okay, theistic evolution has a large following, uh, Christian following, okay, as being one of the primary view, primary views of the old earth creationism. The primary views are actually theistic evolution, old earth, day age, and then uh, young earth. Okay, so these three are the primary views. So theistic evolution, uh, the, the believers that hold on to this view, they believe that God is the creator. He used the tools of evolution to develop life. How involved he was varies on different, different people, different Christians. Uh, some say that he merely set the stage with matter and physical laws and then stepped back. Uh, others insist that he had a hand in starting off life uh, and let evolution come to its combination of man without interfering further. So, so that means Adam and Eve are not literal. Okay? They are just some kind of, uh, either they are just symbols of uh, the first humans or they are actually evolved human. Okay, so they read uh, Genesis chapter one and two very, 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 very symbolically, very, very loosely. Okay? Uh, the next level up is called All Earth Progressive Creation. Uh, this one has uh, uh, the belief that God is more involved. Okay? God is more intimately involved in the development of life on earth God actually intervened through different points of history to create different new species as old one becomes extinct. Okay? Progressive creationists actually look at the nature as the 67th book of the Bible. They say that the nature reveals as much about God as the Holy Scripture. Okay, that's uh, progressive creationism. The next one is uh, not really a creationism idea, okay? but it's more of just a theory. Okay? This is a theory called gap theory. Anyone heard of gap theory? Gap theory, yeah. Gap theory believes that there is a gap between Genesis 1 and 2. Okay, there's a gap. Uh, God created fully functional earth or pre-earth with everything, including the dinosaurs. Okay. Uh, then according to gap theory, something happened to destroy the earth completely. Uh, some speculate that it is the fall of Satan. It's when Satan was cast down, the earth was destroyed because of that. So that the earth became formless and void. That's what Genesis said in the beginning, right? At this point, God started all over again in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, recreating the earth in its paradise uh, uh, as further described in Genesis. Okay, so they believe that in between one and verses, verses 1 and 2 of Genesis, there is a huge gap of millions or even billions of years. Uh, all these things happen in between verses. Uh, I think it's a, uh, a dangerous viewer if you can insert this kind of thing in between verses, that is, that could, that could be dangerous, okay? That could pose some issues. Now, the next one is uh, another major view that Christians hold on to. It's called the day-age creation, okay? All earth day-age creation. Notice that these are all hints of blue, okay? Because they are all, they are, all of them are old earth. They believe that earth is old, okay? Uh, the only one that's different is red color is young earth, believing that earth is young. Okay, uh, now, all Earth Day Age believe that uh, the days spoken in the first chapter of Genesis are sequential period. Okay, they are periods of time or epochs of time. Okay, they are not literally twenty-four hours. Each day, therefore, is thought to be to represent a much longer period of time. Uh, could be thousands, millions, billions of years. Uh, most All Earth creationists do believe. Okay, more, most of them believe that there is a literal pair of human ancestors, Adam and Eve, who were directly created by God just like the young earth creationists do. Uh, YEC is young earth creationists. OEC is all earth, okay? Most old creationists also affirm God's full authority in creation, but with a different understanding of day and time. So this is, uh, this is usually the chart that they will, I mean, they will explain how they look at things. Okay? So day one, you know, so it, it passes from 4.5 billion to 3 billion years. Day two, three to two billion. Uh, day three, day four, day five, and then day six uh, in correspondence to the eras that, uh, that uh, the geo geologists or scientific words that we have, okay? Now the last one, uh, young earth creation. Young earth creationists uh, believe that the creation days in Genesis one are supposed to be read as literal 24 hour days. Okay, so the creation must have occurred between 6,000 to 10,000 years ago. Uh, usually it, it, they will agree on the middle number, maybe 8,000, you know, 8,000 years, about that. They believe that uh, about 2,300 to 3,300 years before Christ, the surface of the earth was radically rearranged by the Noah's flood 
and it was a worldwide flood. Okay, uh, all the land animals and birds uh, are not in the uh, all the land animals and birds not in Noah's Ark. Okay, they perished. Uh, so, so the uh, clean pairs of seven pairs each, clean animals seven pairs each, and unclean one pair each. Right, the rest are all destroyed. They perished. Uh, so the flood is is global in nature, and it is responsible for most, if not all, of the rock layers. That will explain why there are uh, layers and layers of uh, animals and fossils that are hidden underneath uh, the rocks. Uh, and also, of course, they believe in the literal pair of Adam and Eve, and also the full authority of God in creation. So coming to this again, okay, uh, my question to you is, uh, where do you think you stand? Uh, which, which one uh, uh, best describes you? Anyone? Let's label this as uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so one is the last one here. Two, three, four, five, six. Anyone? You can, you can type a number in the chat if you don't want to unmute. Okay. I see some five, some sixes. Some five, some six. That's, that's a good sign, I think. <laughs> oh. No, nobody there is uh, one, two, three, four. Don't be afraid to reveal yourself. Okay, it is, it is, it is uh, okay. At least okay for now. Okay, <laughs> okay. Now, uh, so you see the, the 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 big questions here. It's not just between evolution versus creation, but it's also between Christians. Okay, Christians have a uh, very very. Uh, different uh, uh, views on the creation as well. Uh, just this chart will show you. So yeah, this question continue to defy Bible believers. Like, how old is the earth? Uh, you know, and how, how is the modern dating methods? Uh, are, are they accurate or are they wrong? You know, so all these things. Now, uh, also, right, evolution and creation actually look at the same evidence. We all have the same earth, okay? And whether you're old earth or young earth, you also look at the same earth. Uh, so, so you decide upon uh, your preconceived notion. Okay, if a person really is an atheist and believe in uh, the theory of evolution from Darwinian's perspective, he comes upon the Earth. Uh, look at the, the evidences with that view, with that lenses. Uh, for Christians, we look at the Earth starting from the authority of the Word of God. So that's our presuppositions. Okay, and we will look at the Earth with a quite a different view. Now, what does the Bible say about creation, right? Uh, we just very, 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 very quickly, because I, I don't think we have uh, that much time, just very, very quickly, I will go through a uh, three of the verses here, okay? Genesis 1, 5, 1 to 5, John, and then Hebrews. Ola, chapter 1. So Genesis 1, 1 to 5, right? We all know this portion of the scripture. Uh, we, notice, we notice, actually, we can notice three things here, okay? Uh, first thing is that there is mention of Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Usually people have no problem looking at uh, maybe this is the Father, okay, God. Maybe it's the Father, right? Uh, the Spirit of God, this is the Holy Spirit, probably, right? Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Where is, where is the Son? Where is Jesus? Anyone? Where is Jesus? In the waters? No. <laughs> In the light, um, light is a, is a name of, I mean, light, light is a word that we use to refer to Jesus. Lah, yes, but not, exac not exactly. Lah, okay? uh, it will be clear in the next, in the next part. Lah. I will show you the next verse later. Uh, so the first thing is we see Trinity. Okay? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, this is a good diagram to represent Trinity. How Father, Son, Holy Spirit, each one is God. Each person is God. And yet they are not the same person. Okay, we should not confuse them. Another second, the second interesting thing we notice here, besides the, besides the Trinity, is this. Okay, uh, time, space, and matter are kind of fit. Uh, can kind of be fitted in here. Okay, in the beginning, beginning means time. Okay, time exists now. Uh, so usually uh, we believe that God is. I say usually because sometimes there are people who don't think that is true. Uh, we we should believe that God is outside of time. Okay, so time is actually a creation of God. Uh, God created things and time starts to flow. Okay, so in the beginning, God created the heavens. Uh, heaven with this plural actually means heavens. Okay, it's not the dwelling place of God, but it's the heavens, the space. 
and the earth, matter. So there is space, time, and matter. And thirdly, right, our relationship between light and darkness. Okay, we see that God saw the light and it was good, verse 4, right? And God divided light from darkness. So light and darkness always have uh, uh, some kind of relationship. Okay? It's not just physical properties, but there's also a symbolic and spiritual relationship as well. Okay, next we look at John. Okay, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. Uh, so where is Jesus, right? Back to the question, where is Jesus? We see John chapter 1. It says that the word was with God. The word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Uh, we know from later verse, uh, is it verse 16, is it? Uh, where it says that the word uh, came and dwelt, dwelt among us. He, he be, the word became flesh, right? And dwelt among us. So we know that it's referring to Jesus. So here it says that the word was with God. And therefore it is Jesus. And verse 3 shows us that the word is, uh, all things were made through the word. Okay, through him. Without him was not anything that was made. So nothing was ever made without the word. That means it is, uh, it's, to, it's to really be exclusively clear that the word is true. Every, uh, the word was, uh, everything was made through the word. Okay? And therefore, we can go back to Genesis again and see that when God spoke, okay, he spoke. So creation was done through the word. It is true, Jesus. Uh, how exactly God did that? I don't think we can be sure, okay? but Jesus exists in the sense that when God spoke and created, Jesus is there because creation is done through him. Without him was nothing that was ever made. Okay? It's only made through Christ. And uh, also there's uh, the interplay between darkness and light again. He, uh, in him was the life and the light of man. Okay? The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it or the darkness has not understood it. Okay, so the light and the darkness uh, interplays there again. And Hebrews, okay, Hebrews tells us that uh, the word of God, right, the word uh, or the sun, okay, he is the exact imprint of his nature and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. So we can see that Jesus actually uh, is the one that sustains the, the universe. It's not just everything was made through him, but he sustains all things. Okay, so, so whether it's uh, little things in the universe, uh, like flowers or beetles or the exceeding, exceedingly gigantic things like the sun or the star and terrace that we saw earlier. Jesus, Jesus sustains them all and holds them okay, by the word of his power. And uh, yeah, verses three and four tells us that he's the reason king. He's supreme over all things. And uh, yeah, he, 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 his superiority is above all, all others, okay? So in Hebrews, we'll see how Jesus is supreme over all things, over all. Uh, so with such passages, right, it shows us for, it's, it shows the necessity for Christian uh, to, to, who profess faith in Jesus to believe in creation, okay? Creation must be, we, we cannot squarely believe in the theory of evolution, thinking that that is, that is the, the truth. You know, we need to believe that Jesus, uh, we need to believe that God created. So God is, God is the creator, and therefore we go with the creation side of things. But among the views of creation, right, we, we need to ask, right, uh, yeah, what are the final thoughts on evolution okay, in relation to Christian belief of creation? Uh, I already mentioned this slide just now. So should one be disregarded over the other, right? As Christian, we need to uh, understand, first of all, okay, that creation evolution is actually a very complex uh, issue. Uh, there are centuries of debates worth uh, digging up to, to see if you're interested in. Each side is strongly committed to his own or her own view, uh, his, his own view. And um, they're often very, very difficult to change their mind, okay? So, for example, I'm a Christian uh, and I believe in creation. Okay, would I ever change my mind? Uh, no, I won't. Okay, I won't change my mind because I believe that the Bible is God's word. And to me, it is crystal clear that the Bible teaches that the universe and all things in it are created by God, especially in the reference to Genesis, John, and Hebrews uh, passages that we have looked at. Uh, now, uh, the separate but related question of how old is the earth is a question that is of, cont of contention among Christians. Uh, we will talk about it a bit later. There's a different question, okay? But having said that, okay, I do, I do believe in evolution, but only, evo only evolution of certain type, okay? Uh, I believe in micro-evolution. Okay? This is the evolution that uh, is within the same species. 
That means within the same species, uh, animals actually can mutate and become a different subspecies. But macroevolution uh, is, is not true. Okay? It's, it's not possible to go from marine life to mammals and then to hominids, uh, to human beings. Uh, we don't see any half human, half uh, animal nowadays. Uh, naturally occurring, okay? unless somebody, some mad scientists do something. Otherwise, there's no naturally occurring uh, such uh, hu human, I don't even know whether to say human, uh, creatures uh, available for us to observe. So uh, creation evolution compatible, right? You can see that uh, everything is actually almost opposite uh, in the, in the, it, to each other. So the answer is uh, you can only choose one. You can only choose either creation or evolution. Uh, many try to forcibly marry, marry the two, uh, but you will end up with a third belief, okay, which is a compromise of the two. Uh, something like God started the Big Bang and then let everything flow on its own, or God guided the evolutionary process through millions and millions of years, uh, thus uh, watering down what the Bible clearly teaches. Um, so we have, we have the question that is, I think, more, uh, more important for Christians to think about, okay? is actually this question, okay? is earth old or young? Okay. Both old earth creationism and young earth creationism seek to solve the apparent conflict between science and Bible in regards to the age of the earth. Uh, so the old earth, uh, old earth creationists believe that the earth is around 4.5 billion years old. And the universe is probably about 14.6 billion years old. Uh, the young earth creationists will interpret Genesis chapter 1 and 2 literally. And they will say that the universe uh, will come down to about, or, or the earth, okay, at least the earth is 6,000 to 10,000 years old, which will mean universe as well, because all are created at the same time. So it's about not more than 10,000 years old. So we have, we have three options here. Uh, either the Bible is wrong, or the Bible has to be reinterpre reinterpreted, it has been reinterpreted wrongly, or the scientific data is wrong, it has to be reinterpreted in another way. Uh, now, neither old earth creationism or young earth creationism teaches that the Bible is wrong. Okay. Uh, I just go, I just go to the part again, this one. Yeah, I'm talking about the top two, okay? The top two. Uh, since most of you say like, five and six, right? I would, I would actually say that uh, one, two, and four are dangerous, okay? Three also could be dangerous as well, okay? So five and six, uh, there are a lot of um, similarities that they share, uh, but also quite vast differences as well. So between five and six, uh, old earth and also young earth, yeah, this is, this is the uh, contention between them. Uh, okay, now, neither old earth or young earth creationism teaches that the Bible is wrong, okay? So, so the first option is out, okay? Generally speaking, both old earth and young earth creationists believe in inspiration, inerrancy, and also uh, authority of the word of God. There are genuine dedicated Christians on both sides. I can testify to that. I know there are Christians from both sides. Uh, my friends, okay. Uh, what differs between these two approaches is one's view on what the Bible says, okay. Uh, so it could it could very well be a matter of interpretation. Uh, all Earth creationists believe a strictly literal approach is not the right way to interpret the early chapters of Genesis. All Earth, okay? all Earth. They they believe that Genesis chapter one and two they are uh, primarily symbolic. Or poetic. Okay, they will use the, they will say that you know how day one and day four correlate, day two and day five correlate, day three and six correlate. It seems like there's some kind of poetry there, you know. So they will say that it's actually symbolic. Uh, young earth creationists will interpret Genesis 1 and 2 as literal, historical account of how God actually created the universe. So young earth creationists will ask, they will question why, if the rest of the Genesis is historical. Why should the first two chapters be interpreted differently? All earth creationists will question why, if the Bible uses symbolism in many other books, uh, different parts of the Bible, there's symbolism, why can't metaphors or symbolism be used in Genesis chapter 1 and 2? 
Okay, so there is a, a stalemate there. Uh, in the end, okay, between old earth and young earth, right, which, which is correct? I think uh, Dave said in the chat, right? Yeah, maybe some, some of us don't really know and uh, don't really think it matters. Uh, so what is your view? No? I, th I think it's good to formulate a view so that you have something to stand on. Uh, even if it's the wrong one, this is the one that I think you, you can afford to be wrong and choose the right one uh, later on. Okay, uh, what do you think is my view? Any guess? Oh, some, some put very fast. Uh, and, and, and these are the two that I know. <laughs> I mean, my friends. Okay, personally, okay, if you have not guessed right by now, uh, it's correct. I hold on to the young earth perspective. I believe that Genesis 1 and 2 are meant to be read literally. And a young earth creationism is what a literal reading will present, okay? It will present the, the, the understanding. But at the same time, okay, please know that I do not view old earth creationism as heresy. Okay? I'm not saying that day age old earth creationism is a heresy. I'm not going to question the faith or motives or, or of my brothers and sisters in Christ who disagree with me on this issue of the age of the earth. Uh, ultimately, one can hold to views other than young earth creationism and still have an accurate understanding of the core doctrines of the Christian faith. Uh, as I interpret it, okay, the Bible indicates that the earth is relatively young. According to secular scientists and those who accept an old earth reading of the scripture, right, the earth is very old. Okay, so since neither viewpoint can be explicitly proven, I choose to side with the, with the view that uh, there is the plain or literal reading of the Bible, uh, even though it requires reinterpretation of certain scientific data. Okay, so if you go with scientific data, then you, you don't have to reinterpret the, reinterpret the science data, but you have to reinterpret Genesis 1 and 2. Okay, so uh, ultimately, I think, yeah, it, it comes down to uh, the belief that God is sovereign. Okay, I, I think that whether you hold on to this or that, okay, either view, as long as, I, as it's not uh, theistic evolution or evolutionary creation, I think that is pandering too much towards evolution uh, and dangerously so, okay? So I think we end with this passage, uh, but I still have more time for some FAQ later, okay? Now, ending here, right? Uh, <clears throat> God is the one who made the world and everything in it and beyond it as well. Uh, and he does not live in temples made by men, okay? Not, not served by human hands uh, as though he needed anything. So God is, in fact, he, he needs nothing from us. He's the one who gives life and breath and everything to us. Okay, everything. Uh, God made every nation on earth through one man. Uh, verse 26, right? Yeah, it says, through one man, okay, Adam. And God allotted the time periods and the boundaries of all mankind's dwelling place. So that means even where we dwell, the time periods that we are born in, you know, is, these are all allotted by God. This is done so that everyone will see God in the hope that they might feel their way towards him and find him. God is not far from each of us. He desires for us to seek him and ultimately find him. Uh, will you look to creation? Uh, look at creation okay, and see the handiwork of God. Uh, will you look at scripture and see God's fingerprints on all things? Will you take this moment uh, of our minuteness and uh, understand his majesty, of the need and the want to fall down before him to worship him? So he is worthy. He is worthy of you all. Uh, worship him and him alone. I will, uh, I will not ask for a reflection question, but I'm going to show you another slide, okay? Uh, but before that, let me show you a resource slide first. There are not many slides that, I, sorry, not many resources link that I put, okay? I only put the two that I think are the best uh, for each view, okay? For all Earth, uh, I will recommend uh, Reason to Believe, which is by Hugh Ross. Uh, he's a, I, th I think he was a real life astronomer, Christian as well. Uh, reasons to believe. So this, they, they promote a all earth view, okay? For young earth, uh, this is a popular website. Okay? It's called Answers in Genesis. Uh, both views seems to be quite staunchly in their own view, okay? Uh, almost the fact saying that this is the only view that you can take, okay? Uh, but ultimately, I think if they are pushed to ask, okay, they will, if you look at the doctrinal statement, I don't, I didn't check the reason to believe. If you look at Answer in Genesis doctrinal statements, they will say that all earth creationists are their brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. They do say that, okay? So it's not like they disown each other. Uh, so now, 
here is a slide that I prepared. Uh, I prepared for some other events. So all the questions are already here. Uh, so I'm trying to limit your question, okay? Uh, do do you think of do you think any of these questions uh, will be asked of you, or maybe you have tried to answer them before and you want to talk about them? Uh, some popular ones is you know like uh, where did Cain get his wife, kind of question uh, or uh, how can you have twenty four hour day before the sun is created on day four? Ever thought of that? This is more of a question to young earth creationists because if the sun was created on day four, what happened on day one, two, and three? Or I'll give you the option, if you prefer not to ask anything from this slide, you can ask your own question or you can share your own thoughts also. All right, I do have a question. It refers to what you said earlier about um, it's important to have a view so that you can take a stand on it. Now, in, I, I'm talking about uh, in relation between choosing between five and six, okay? Let's yeah. say that one to four are, are not biblical. But you say it, it is important to take us to believe, to, to, to choose one so that you can take a stand on it. So the question I have is what benefits are there to either you personally or to the church as a whole? in you taking a stand on one of those two? In, in what way does it edify the church or contribute to helping the lost to be saved? Mm. I think uh, personally, okay, when I take a stand, right, if someone asks a question, it will be easier to, for me to answer. Uh, just like I would like to use this, you know, the, the difference between Reformed theology versus Armenian view. I do have a stance, but I will share both. So when someone asks me about creation and evolution or old earth and young earth, uh, I will also try to share both views. Uh, but ultimately, I will actually depends on who I talk to. You know, If I talk to a person that doesn't ask me what is your stance, I will not tell them my stance, actually. Yeah, I will not tell them. But if someone who wants to know what is your view, what, what is my view, then I will share with them my view. Uh, I do believe that it is. It might not be helpful at the onset immediately to tell someone this is my view. It sounded like you know, like you need to believe in what I believe. So I think it's still good to, even though you, uh, I take a stance, okay, uh, or, or some of you might take a stance, uh, but I think it's good to share both, to share both old earth and young earth, and let the person who is asking uh, struggle with it first, and come to a conclusion on his or her own so that the view is, uh, is, is more permanent. You know, it's not something that is prepackaged. I just give it to you as, a, as, a, as, a, as a package answer, and then you just take it. Sometimes uh, you don't like, I mean, when you don't like it, you just throw it away. But if you struggle with it first, then that will be helpful. So I know what you, what you mean, whether, uh, why, why, what's the benefit, right? I think the benefit is that it will be, uh, more beneficial for the person himself. Maybe not so much in building up the church, you know, but it's more for personal kind of uh, edification. Yeah. What about if we are perfectly happy to acknowledge we don't know and that we can see the, we can see the, uh, the, the arguments for both and we're happy with to let that uh, just be because actually yeah. the, the trouble I have with any kind of strong view on creation is in my experience, creation is a, is a, is a barrier to many non-Christians to even considering the gospel. And so when they ask me about my view on creation, my primary goal is to say to them, forget creation, focus on Jesus. You know, you can sort out your views on creations later. That is not an issue over which you will, your eternal destiny depends. So I want to say to my non-Christian friends, um, look, you know, I don't, I don't want to explain creation to you because I really want you to look at Jesus Christ. And uh, I mean, I could discuss creation with you later, but actually what I really want to do is to enable them to move beyond this, this thing of creation because they've heard Christians speak so passionately about young earth or old earth or six days literally or, or not that it completely distracts them from they, they sort of say, well, if that's what Christians are like, I want nothing to do with them. 
And so my goal is always to try and say, look, just, just forget it. Just put it to one side and focus on what really matters. And so that's why I say I don't, I don't want to take a stand. I don't really want to hold a view. I acknowledge that there are, um, you know, there are pros and cons in both. And I don't think it's worth my time and effort. Neither does it help anyone if I do take a strong stand. In my experience, it's mostly used to create division and and hurt. And, and you know, people do mm. make. So now I yeah, just, but at the very least, you will believe in creation, right? Oh yes, of course. I mean, I I I want to believe in everything the Bible says, mm. but I also acknowledge there are some passages in Scripture where I'm honestly not sure which which of the two options are are the are the right. Sure. I'm happy to wait until I get to heaven and God says, okay, it was this one. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. I need to know every single answer right now. I can understand where you're coming from, yeah. And I appreciate your view. Yeah, but uh, the most important question you have answered, which is that you believe in creation. I think that's the most important part, yeah. Uh, can I add in? Yes, Terence. Actually, I agree with Dave in completely. Like, I find that uh, oftentimes a uh, discussion on creationism is actually a sideshow like, when actually we are trying to present the gospel in Jesus Christ. I understand that. But I'm also aware of the statistics that says that a lot of Christians, uh, youth people, when they go into university, they actually leave the church partially because apologetics is not handled well. Like. So a lot of Christians are then told that, for example, when they're young, that uh, creationism, God created the earth and so on, but they never deal with the science versus uh, Bible tension. So therefore, even when young earth actually have a good basis to explain, okay, so I also admit that young earth actually do have the uh, way of explaining the scientific uh, uh, evidence based on the biblical um, uh, supposition. That one I understand. But because the young people are not aware, so from gospel and actually from, uh, what do you call this, being a Christian sort of thing, they are not prepared. So... I, that one is because they have not actually dealt with the evidence. They only believe because what people have told them. The pastor told them that God created the earth and therefore all these questions, these 16 questions, they have never thought about it before. And therefore their faith gets broken whenever they reach university and they find that the Christians in the past don't know how to answer and the world has all the answers. When actually the Christians do have an answer. So I find that it's actually helpful for evangelism as well. Not for all, Mostly, I think it's a sideshow. But for some who are sincere seekers, it is. Yeah. Pastor, Oliver, Pastor Oliver, can I say something? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, for me, I, I believe in creation. There's no doubt about it. The only thing that I struggle of the young age creation's theory is that it's sort of, uh, it's sort of contradict to my understanding as a person who has been involved in the oil and gas business in the past, where we look at the age of the earth is certainly more than 10,000 years. And that's why one of the reasons why we find oil. So, so that is a struggle that, that I have. And I, the only thing that I can explain the, and, and fit into what I have been doing all this while in the past is to, to, to tell myself that the day that was mentioned in Genesis is different from the day that we know of now. And, mm. and if I accept the theory of the days that are different, then it fits nicely to all what I know about this earth. And I truly believe God is the only one who created because no one else can create such a fantastic universe that we have. You know, even the distance of the earth from the sun is calculated so accurately that you cannot yeah. have it less by one meter or, or so, and you'll upset the, the whole the whole things that we know of. So that, that is the, the, the view that I have. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your uh, sharing. Actually, between these views, right, I think there's one more, there's another version of Young Earth. Uh, I, will say, I won't say that it's a category by itself. Like, it's probably like a branching off. Uh, there are some young earth creationists that believe that actually God created an old creation. Uh, do you know what I mean? So when, when God created, uh, just they, they use the analogy of how God created Adam. 
Aiden was made a 30... Uh, actually, we don't know how old is Aiden. Maybe an adult male. Huh? I mean, not maybe. He's an adult, okay? Aiden was not made as an infant and grew up, you know, but he was made as an adult. So it's a mature creation. So the universe could have been a mature creation by God. Uh, so the theory goes that, if it's a theory, uh, the theory goes that God created an, an aged-looking universe. Again, therefore, the universe uh, has all the things that you have mentioned, you know, like, like uh, sentiments and, and, and petrol and uh, natural gas, all these things, because of how the earth actually was made old. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Terence also says something in the chat, yeah. So, yeah, if, if that resolves your, your, your tension, then, then hopefully that helps. Otherwise, continue digging. <laughs> probably, that you, helps, yeah. probably that helps. Yeah, or if you think that I it's can, not really necessary. I can, I can accept that, yeah. Yeah. Because we, we cannot say the Earth age is only 10,000. Between mm. to 10,000 years old, I think, or oh, 60, six, six, uh, six to 10,000 years old. To me, I can't, I can't definitely cannot accept that. Yeah, but if we but say God created a mature earth, yes, then I can accept that. Mm. I, but I, I find that uh, whenever we turn from trusting in ourselves or the world to Christ, we are always faith, faced with a decision, and that is basically, are we willing to accept by faith things which we cannot understand? And are we willing to accept it solely on the basis of what the Word of God says? And so for me, this is why, you know, Hebrews 11 verse 3 was so helpful for me, because it says, it is a, we, by faith, we understand that everything was made at God's command. It's not, it's not by faith by uh, puzzling it out or, or uh, seeing the rationality of it. It's, it's, an article, it's a matter of faith. And I think um, that would be true uh, whether we believe that, you know, the earth is cre was created 10,000 years ago or not. It, ultimately, it comes down to, do we believe God's word over and above the evidence of our senses or what the world tells us? Um, and I, I'm just, I'm just, at a place where I'm saying, I'm, I certainly believe God could have made the earth in six literal 24 hour periods, no more than 10,000 years ago, and make it look as though it was millions and millions of years old. I believe God is powerful enough and wise enough to be able to do that. Whether he did it or not, I don't know. And it doesn't really matter because it doesn't affect the way I live and it doesn't affect, uh, it doesn't affect anything that I can think of. In, in the world that we live in now, but I believe that God could have done it and he may have done it or uh, despite, you know, despite what we see with our, with our eyes. Hmm. Yeah. May I add? Yes. Uh, it is all, it is all good. And it is all good to be able to accept that there are things that we cannot, uh, understand but we still trust that is god's word although we may not understand like the trinity and all that sort of thing we may not fully understand but that's but we but we believe that is true but i think for younger generation it is an issue because for them they because of the way they view their because of their youth they they see things more black and white so if they find that science says this, but the Bible says that, they will think that the Bible is not reliable. So how can I believe it? Mm. So yes, you can, you can try to focus on Jesus. You can try to focus on the New Testament part. But when they go back or for whatever reason, someone gives them this doubt about the Genesis account that, uh, that the, the creation story is, is just a story and uh, make-believe myths that has been put into the Bible. So then they start questioning, is the Bible reliable? Okay, I can believe the New Testament, but I cannot believe the Old Testament part because it has unreliable stories in there. So then there's a question of, can I trust the Bible? Can I not trust the Bible? I, can, I, I accept this part, I don't accept that part. Then you have a problem for this young, young believer or whoever, whoever that may have this issue with, with regards to reality and what the bible says 
So that's why I, I do find that this issue is somewhat important. It's not important enough to say that this person is not a believer or a believer or whatever, but it is important for, for believers to know, the, to be at least prepared for the answers. Lah. If the person can accept, if the person can accept, okay, I don't know all the answers, but I still believe God created everything. Even though it is evolution or creation, whatever, I believe that God created it. Then, okay, that's not a, that's not a big deal. But if they find that I'm, it must be true, the, if the Bible is true and God and God, God is the one that sent out this word, then it must be 100% true. Otherwise, I cannot trust it. So that's the only problem. And as what Terence pointed out, that a lot of young, young people that went to college or whatever uh, university, they lost their faith because they cannot, they cannot accept this, uh, this dilemma. Hmm. Yeah, I think what Zach said, I can echo that. Okay. I'm just showing you very, very quickly, maybe a minute, okay? Uh, this is what I prepared for a chapel talk at the secondary school. Uh, actually, the secondary school where I serve as chaplain, uh, we have actually a question box where students can drop in questions. So these are real questions that students ask, you know, who created God? Uh, and then, uh, was God the first dude person on earth? Uh, they ask, uh, you know, when does the world start and end? They ask all kinds of questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on evolution in relation to Christian belief? These are real, really written by students. She wants to be disregarded over the other. How did God exist in the first place? Uh, if God took seven days to create earth, how is universe expanding? I don't know how is that related, but yeah. Uh, who created the earth? You know, dinosaurs or human? Oh, who's like, who came to the earth first? Dinosaurs or human? If Adam and Eve were only two people that were first created and she gave birth to three sons, where did the rest of human population come from? So they really think about all these things. Okay? If Adam and Eve didn't sin, what would happen? Uh, okay, some are not related to creation directly, like, but they are all Genesis related and they have thought about these things. Yeah. I think, I think my time has, uh, has run out. <laughs> so, any, any, anything uh, you want to, any, any, okay, maybe Pastor Lim, what, what do we do now? <laughs> okay, I think uh, that's definitely what you said, uh, a primer to get us uh, started uh, thinking about it. I think you have FAQs given the time for us to browse through uh, personally would be very helpful. I think that uh, this primer gives us a start to, okay, this is where we come from and then we can explore it further. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. all right. Uh, that, so, in that case, uh, do lead us in a closing prayer and then we'll pass our time to, to Brian. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, let us close in prayer. Uh, Father, we give you thanks for the time that we have uh, and the time that uh, we can use to, to share in, with each other and also to uh, uh, learn from you, God, and learn from each other as well. I pray that God you help us to continue to uh, seek you above all things, uh, to know what are the important doctrines that are uh, worthy to, to, to die for, and what are the things that uh, we, we can uh, choose to agree to disagree? I pray for your wisdom upon us. Uh, help us to, to learn about this and also to live rightly uh, under, under your grace, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. I pray for the uh, FAQ questions that mainly they're for interest sake. Uh, hopefully they can answer uh, uh, some of the queries that we might have, Lord. I pray that God you use them. And use each of us in your amazing ways, Lord, to witness to others. Even during the time of COVID, help us to have creative ways to reach out to others through social media or through Zoom call, uh, phone call and messages, Lord. Help us, help us to continue to minister and to love and to uh, be your light unto the world. Lord. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.